Welcome back to the Whole Maneuver Podcast. I'm Mark. And I'm Mike. We're two hardworking dads trying to immerse ourselves in Star Wars and fit it into our very busy lives. If this is your first time listening and or watching, in this sometimes short-form Star Wars podcast, we'll share our thoughts on different topics from a galaxy far, far away. Excuse me. I just, this came to the top of my head. Uh, what did the Mandalorian Din Djarin say whilst churning butter? Green or blue? <laughs> this is the way. Oh, um, Michelle, you know, spelled W H E Y. <laughs> Just in case, I wouldn't have gotten that. Because remember, everybody, remember, everybody, jokes are funnier when you have to explain. <laughs> that's, that's I want to know: Do you use the way to make butter or the curds? I don't even know, or both. Uh, I guess call <laughs> Grandma Tuffet. No, she ate the curds and the way. She didn't make butter. She knows about curds and way. Anyways, this isn't a nursery rhyme uh, podcast. So, <laughs> yeah. So this week, uh, for episode thirty-eight of the Hold the Maneuver podcast, we have Trek Wars joining us uh, with Aspen Webster and Kenny. And wow, I just blanked, man. <laughs> I was going to call you Ke Kenny. Man. I was, I was going to call you Kenny Loggins for some reason. <gasps> oh man, that's. Oh. I mean, it's Kenny. not the first time. Kenny, can you can you uh can you do your Kenny Loggins impression? Sing it. Oh, hey. oh, you, you are blasting. You got to pull that mic away, buddy. No. <laughs> Maybe uh, like sing yeah. back uh the the Christopher Robin song. What's the Christopher Robin song? Sorry, I won't get into it. This is a Star Wars podcast, <laughs> not a Kenny Loggins podcast. This is Christopher well, Robin. Well, well, I mean, sure. Ewan McGregor was Christopher Robin, so that goes back around to Star Wars. So there you go. There's a connection. He said he had this yeah. whole album about uh. Uh, about a uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh songs and, and other child children's songs. Was it Disney sanctioned? No. That's related no. to Star Wars. No, it was not, but it was beautiful. Outstanding. <laughs> Sorry, I won't blow my levels off with it for sure. Well, no By the way, and... this is what the Trek Wars podcast is like. <laughs> All good. All good. That's I'm just going to eat my cough drops and keep going. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. I was even looking at your name and I've listened to many of your podcasts many times. And for some reason, it was right here and then it went that way. Literally, <laughs> no worries in the slightest. What I'm I'm just pleased. Uh, I'm, I'm just pleased to be with y'all. Come on. Yeah, I'm pleased to have you guys on here. Yeah, I kind of did a, a secret uh, kind of backdoor thing with uh, this the Mando reviews this year. Um, I'm having a bunch of people that uh, either like Ted Lasso as well as Star Wars, uh, also coming on for these episodes. So I have in the coming weeks, you're the you you guys are the first, but in the coming weeks there will be some other people, and we know that the connections between Ted Lasso and Star Wars are many, um, especially our least favorite mm -hmm. scout trooper that uh, smacked. Uh, Grogu in the head was by Mr. Oh, that's Lasso right. Himself. Absolutely. So. Yes. Also, both filmed uh, in London sometimes. Yeah. And they both love their, their blue milk. Too, oh, yeah. Pro classic, probably. classic thing yeah. to know about yeah. British people. <laughs> uh, both have a devious silver fox that are overseeing the machinations of complex systems that seem out of our control. Both have uh, wise bearded uh, men that are kind of <laughs> that are kind of coaches to yeah. their their perspective uh, people around them. But yeah, I just uh, I'm happy to have you all here. Uh, so without kind of like further ado, this week the two news segments we kind of we're going to talk about briefly. They're related to the Mandalorian. Uh, was the Mandalorian season four is apparently already written, Jean Favre said. And he also, in connection with that, also said the Mandalorian has no ending planned. Uh, it's not like there's a finale that we're building to. So thoughts on both of these uh, things. 
I will go round robin. We'll start with Aspen, then go to Kenny, then go to Mike. Oh, is that because I was making a real face? Part <laughs> <laughs> with me. Um, fab question. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm cool with it. I I find a part of me wanting there to be. I'm not worried about this with Favreau, but I, I I do get a little bit scared sometimes that we're going to get a lost situation. And if there's no kind well, of thought thinking. process, yeah, of like, where are we going to go with this? Uh, I, then I'm a little bit uh, worried about kind of the, the way it'll move. Um, but at the same time, I don't think there's any puzzle boxing going on. I think there's a real understanding of lore and a love for it and some interesting stuff that I see happening. So I'm not terribly worried, but I am a little bit like an interesting thing to say, John, <laughs> an interesting thing to say. So that's where I'm, that's kind of where I'm sitting right now as an initial impression. Indeed, uh, similar thoughts to Aspen. Uh, very similar, actually. And in fact, I'd say 99% similar to Aspen. If not to say that my thoughts are exactly the same as Aspen's. Uh, it's are you, it, it, are you two it, just the same people. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I, I would be less concerned if the show was a little bit more like it was in the first season, which is to say a little bit more self-contained, less involved in getting its tendrils in the rest of the Star Wars universe. But it seems very clear that uh, Filoni and Fabro want to incorporate so many elements of external Star Wars. And that gives me cause for concern. But the rest of season three has yet to play out. So consider me cautiously optimistic okay. because it would just be fun to have a show that's episodic. Yeah. Again. Well. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. Already yeah, I was... seeing notes of, of not that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was in the lost boat with uh, no ending planned, which they don't have the Abram side where we're going to just try to mind fuck you going yes. on. So. The puzzle box, yeah. the puzzle box with no purpose. Mm. Oh, does Abrams like to puzzle box? I had, I had no idea. He also likes the lens flare. I bet you didn't know that. Welcome to his TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. Like, go ahead, have season four written. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that they already have season four written. I mean, I kind of assumed that they had that written already too, since it's been two years since season two ended. They, they definitely had the time to do that in, in that time. Also, because he also said in there too that they also had to write it out and so that it coalesced with uh, like the Skeleton Crew show that's going to be coming out as well as Ahsoka because they all kind of take place like mm -hmm. within around the same timeline. Oh boy. Uh, which... <laughs> I have um, a note on that of something that happened in this Mandalorian episode that I that I know me and Aspen specific, specifically are probably very happy about. But uh, Mike and Kenny Farrell are like, what are you guys talking about? We'll get to that in a second. I'm sure um, I saw it. I just don't understand it. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean that that's are like palming you, it, you face? don't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> about about what? About, about seaweed guy. No, not that guy. We'll get we'll get the seaweed guy. Um, the seaweed, seaweed guy, a guy? Is he a guy? He Sorry, seaweed? I know that seaweed guy is a guy, but is he a is he a capital G guy? Maybe his seaweed. name is Guy. Oh my god, he's he's a guy as much as uh, Gene's guy from season two of the Mandalorian. <laughs> Everybody remembers Gene's guy. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm excited for whatever they do with season four. I I'm cautiously optimistic about them kind of not having like they don't need to have like eight seasons kind of pre-planned in their head but i would like them to have some kind of notion as or like an inkling to some kind of idea of like this is like where we want this end post to kind of be and it can mm -hmm. kind of morph and stuff over the years of them making the show but have some sort of direction concept <laughs> or direction of of where they're headed towards where it they want like Grogu and Din to end up. Yeah, it depends on like how big they want the show to be, which the yeah. bigger that they want it to be, I think the more planning that they need to do. 
yeah, that's my statement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because it, 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 it's funny because I was just thinking about that. I want to dive too close into talking about the episode yet, but I was reflecting on this in terms of it being kind of premiere television of only 10 episodes versus if this were just back in the day of 20 something episodes where you could be just kind of you would have your own little adventures in each. Some wouldn't be as good as others. You just mm. get different varying types of quality. Yeah, something could go on for seasons and seasons and it'd be fine. But I am curious about where we're going with it as a kind of a, a cohesive whole if it is going to be within this medium. You know what I mean? So. Yeah you know <laughs> yeah definitely something to think about uh but so from there uh we'll get into talking about chapter 17 of the mandalorian the season three premiere episode one that's a whole bunch of numbers uh so <laughs> in this first episode of the mandalorian uh titled the apostate this episode was directed by rick uh famayama or sorry wow Famu. <laughs> wow all right what? it wasn't john favreau i thought today has been Today has been fun for me with names. Uh, Rick Famayama. And it premiered <laughs> on Disney Plus on March 1st. Um, and as we introduced you guys at the beginning, we're being joined by Kenny Madison. <laughs> I remember your name this time. And Aspen <laughs> Webster from Trek Wars. Loggins uh, couldn't so, make it. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Aspen is very much the Messina to my Loggins. There you go. That's a great joke, by the way. I was Aspen, say, is that a you good just... thing or a bad thing? Um, you know, in retrospect, that might have been a bad thing because I think that Aspen is much more crucial to just the general Trek Wars operation than Messina was to. Uh, I'm sorry, Aspen, I accidentally insulted you by calling you a Messina. Um, I don't think I know what this means. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. There's one person that's listening to the Holdo maneuver that's just clutching their tummy, going, Logan's a Messina. <laughs> And then the rest of nobody your knows who is Messina like, is. Yeah, I just assumed you were saying something nice about me. So what a disappointment! <laughs> Look, Loggins and Messina have great harmonies together. This is oh, in boy. that one song. <laughs> yeah, in the one song that Loggins and Messina <laughs> released. Great about so, Christopher Robin. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, I really dug into it. I got to look up Loggins and Messina. Please get us back on track. All right. Uh, well. In this episode, I have to say, uh, like, I enjoyed it. I wasn't super blown away by the premiere, though. Um, it was good, not great for for me. I liked a lot of stuff about it. Um, but it did have a lot of everything that people have come to love about The Mandalorian, like mm -hmm. the action, uh, suspensors, funny Grogu moments. Uh, it was also <laughs> great to finally see Din Djarin and Grogu back together again. Uh and probably also very confusing for people that didn't watch the Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> um, which, side note to that, they showed certain things in the the episode recap, like before they showed the episode. Some of that stuff was from Book of Boba Fett, but I'm surprised they didn't show more from the Book of Boba Fett in that recap. Especially because yes. the thing... I, I guess I'll just get to this one part that I was going to get to later anyways, but the one thing that they showed in the recap they then basically did again later in the episode mm -hmm. which i yeah. found kind of redundant which was uh so that part that i thought was redundant was the exploration we saw of, yeah from the book of Boba Fett, chapter five return of the mandalorian and the recap at the beginning of the episode it was kind of felt like when uh tv shows used to have a character repeat like last time on <laughs> yeah or like an action so like when they went to like a commercial break someone would be like oh it's you and then they come back from commercial and it'd be like oh a it's you take of that it's like oh it's you so it's oh. like this. yeah but a second take not the exact same <laughs> yeah. take exactly yeah, it wasn't it was like a multiverse thing where like oh this happened this way sliding doors uh 100 that's a hundred percent what it was like i was genuinely I, like are we here because yes yeah. i just made I just made a Gwyneth Paltrow sliding doors oh. reference on this. That's thing. okay. I made a Loggins and Messina <laughs> reference. I think we're all good at deep cuts. Yeah. <laughs> we're uh, everywhere. But yeah, so I, I guess we'll start with like where the episode starts, where the flashback fake out. Uh, <laughs> and we can kind of yeah. go round robin from here again with Aspen, Kenny, and then Mike, and then myself. Ah, it was a fake out, by the way. I genuinely was sitting there being like, 
okay so this is how it started and then it was like and then I was like a Naboo fighter I was like when is this and then I was like oh it's Din <laughs> it's Grogu um it was pretty fabulous I um I agree uh definitely the in the good not great again reflecting on it just general ideas about the episode kind of felt a touch like oh we okay, we got to get some stuff out of the way almost like we got to get this exposition out of the way we got to show your favorite people uh we got to say why that one lady isn't here anymore because she turned out to be a jerk uh we got to be like we got to move through that um which felt a touch video gamey to me like okay well to do x we've got to get y we've got to get a thing to get to the thing um so it did have a general sense to me of sort of movement and I'm not sure where we're going I'd love to dive into this a little bit more but I'm finding myself at this point especially in season three as we're moving in and shifting away from more just kind of episodic into a greater sort of lore and understanding of this really wanting them to like dig really deep down into Mandalorian lore because they're starting to, you know, we're starting to get more of it with Bo-Katan coming in last season, more understanding that, like, his experience as Mandalorian is his experience as part of a sect, which is effectively a cult, which in my mind is probably an offshoot, is, I imagine is an offshoot of Death Watch, a terrorist organization, which is its own thing that you see in Clone Wars and stuff. So yeah. I'm interested in his emotional journey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Can you just put in the chat? Mandalorian. Great job, buddy. Uh, mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I I'm finding myself wanting to really, if we're gonna, if we're not gonna be episodic anymore, if we're gonna be part of this, to really, I want to see, I really want to see him emotionally dig into what this means for him. And so I could feel the episode being like, okay, so we're just doing a thing, we're doing a thing, and I was like, what am I missing? The emotional stakes. And their emotional stakes that he needs to stop being an apostate and be this real Mandalorian again. But like the the bit the best moment to me was at the very end with Bo Katan. I was just like, this shit forever. Sorry, am I not supposed to to swear? Oh. This stuff forever. No, you're fine. <laughs> so. you're, you're fine. Mike Mike already dropped a, a dank ferric earlier. So. Strange just today. Yeah, that's kind of like the summary of my thoughts. I have and many more that are also about things like. I wish that dude could take his helmet off. We can't rely on just the emotional resonance of Grogu for forever. Anyway. <laughs> well, you are not the the last of us to want him to take his helmet off. Uh, I see. I see. <sighs> also That's good show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's my turn. My yeah. thoughts uh mandalorian season three episode one chapter 17 um as a person that likes star wars uh mm -hmm. i like star wars whenever it's good um i know it's a controversial s statement uh and i am yeah this this was this was good i enjoyed it there were some set pieces that i found pretty darn clever and also as someone that uh Unlike Din Djarin, I am not religiously devoted to Mandalorian. Uh, and so I found myself uh, a little bit lost at the beginning because I am not someone that has watched Book of Boba Fett. I have, oh. because I'm terminally online, I have kept abreast on the fact that the major emotional... You didn't miss much. <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> Michael, if you could say that closer to the microphone, that would be great. <laughs> You want me to put it in my mouth? Like, yeah. Oh, gosh. There's a sound bite. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I make many. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I find it completely flummoxing that you would jettison the emotional climax of what should be the beginning of this season to a completely separate episode. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the the quality of this episode. As it is, and as it is right now, a standalone episode, setting up a lot of things, and also it's doing what Mandalorian does best, which is seemingly high budget set pieces that are pretty darn clever, using Star Wars iconography in pretty dang cool ways. And it's freaking fun on a visceral level. Whenever that, whenever that big old crop guy 
gives a good old twirl. You kidding me? <gasps> I it was very exciting. The death roll. Like, the death roll. The death right. roll. I was like, it's a space alligator. <laughs> Which is weird because anytime that you like anything, you you dip into a deep southern accent. I'm like, take a look at this giant space alligator. <laughs> <laughs> loved this armor we we're fighting it <laughs> was that the the lake placid of navarro <laughs> yes it didn't where'd have that creepy old lady though where'd everybody's space dogs go <laughs> that, that's where you'd get the the southern accent with john schneider coming in there <laughs> more like rob schneider i, I don't Oh but both God. are uh, oh my gosh. kind of uh, wow. uh, off with Cara Dune. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Levels. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good Lord. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. How, about, how about you, Mike? What did you, you think of the episode? Yeah, it Mike. was a pipe episode. So it was its purpose was to set up the season. And it, it's what it did. Oh, my gosh. Is that is that a term? Laying pipe? Yeah. I just I just love the I've never heard the phrase a pipe episode. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Boy, they had a lay pipe for the season. Yeah. Mark, why do you look upset, Mark? Is it because yeah, it means something else? Does it mean something else, Mark? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just I'm listening to to Jizz and my other ear. Look, um, my, again, uh, that's another great sound by if you just sure. clip that tiny little bit right there. Mike, in order to get the proper jizz tracks, Mike just wants to put the mic in his mouth uh, and, you know, you lay some pipe. Churn yeah. the butter. His favorite is... band is ben- Vinegar and Dan. Is this? <laughs> On the model notes. Is this what it means to have a dad joke podcast? <laughs> it's probably the a... most dad jokey that, one we've done. That's the entire <laughs> premise of this podcast. <laughs> is this what it means? What a... All that stuff where you're just like, I why am I here? I need to leave. To that, I guess I do have a child. <laughs> that's a cat. <laughs> we say we say a dad joke and then we execute the hold the maneuver, where it explodes cool. all of the ships around us. And then it makes <laughs> the really cool sound space. Jizz wallers everywhere. Yeah, just all over the wall. I mean, how times can we say jizz waller in this episode? Let's get a cat going in the bottom. I mean, George Lucas knew what he was doing when he named the genre of music jizz. Mm-hmm. Did he, he name he, it though, or did he just pick it? No, he he, he definitely picked it. He's he's into weird stuff like that, <laughs> Fast, faster and more intense. That's oh. what he always said. I have a faster, on the... just like churning butter. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's, well, that, that's how you churn butter. You have to do it faster <laughs> and more intense. Otherwise, it becomes uh, never done as cheese. Though. I don't know. I don't know whip, how dairy works whip, other whip, than whipped cream, whip, 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 whip cream, whip, whip cream, yeah. whip cream, whip, 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 cool whip, whip, cool whip, <laughs> whiskey. Why are you saying it that way? <laughs> saying what, what way? Say what, weird. what way? I will. I will. Oh, wow. What yeah, a time. Pipe are. episode. Gone, Back to that. Gone completely off the rails. <laughs> off those the, the rails of pipe. Um, yeah, it set up a lot, and my favorite part was the last scene with Bo Katan. I like that. Yeah. So, yes, yes, yes. Mm. like my just the, the, right when you like, the first shot of her, you're like, I know what's gonna happen. This is amazing. Like, she was just lounging in, in that chair too, she but it was angry like, lounging. Like, she, she was just like, she was mm. pissed, mm. and it was like so much was told in her posture. It was great. Loved yeah. it. This may be a tangent. Yeah, if, we don't do those, those here. Those aren't if, allowed in this episode. <laughs> oh, thank goodness! I was going to throw it to the court and see if it would be allowed. It's got to be hard to do chair acting like that. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, "Could someone tell me more about Bo Katan and like her background?" You're like, "What's is Katie Sackhoff just that good at chair sitting?" And First acting? off, I've watched all of Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, I know she's good at chair acting. All right, she <laughs> flew a Viper. All right, Aspen. Uh, but also chair acting the bigger the chair the harder the acting job has got to be Shatner is good at it even though this is a Star Wars podcast I'm so sorry All right. he's he can hold a chair and Katie Sackhoff can hold a chair it's a big chair you know he can hold it 
you know who does really good chair acting in this episode is Grogu when he's in that chair that spins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, no legs. Yeah, it Mike. Was... Mike and I talked about that off mic uh, before <laughs> everyone arrived. We were just like there was more of Grogu being a kid, but using a, a Jedi being a kid, or like, oh. like what you would just do when you're at the doctor's office or somewhere, and you're just in a chair, and you're like. Yeah, I'm gonna just turn in a circle and this like, some candy with the force. I know <laughs> yeah. we yeah, we probably want to get into like recap stuff, but if I could, if I could, the chair okay. and then also just grabbing those little babu fricks and just just like squeezing them. Best thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's like a toddler with a cat. <laughs> I love I like how he called them like bad baby too. They were like oh, they were yeah. like bad baby. <laughs> Sorry, he's young. Also, oh the God. the genius part of the sound design on the chair. Mm. Oh yeah. Where he's you hear him use the force and just that low rumble that we've heard in the franchise, but just with the chair. With the every chair. single time. It would be one thing if he was just holding up his little uh Grogu hand, but every time just you know, so another thing this reminds me of, uh, that's kind of a newsy thing, is that John Favreau also said that two years have passed since Grogu went off with Luke. And I'm trying to reconcile that. Now, I think that just got taken out of context with the, okay. the interview. I think he's just um, talking about like the real world passage of time between when uh... season two ended and when season three is beginning but i get i think with the way whoever i don't remember which site posted the article that that came from but i think which whichever way it was posted it sounded differently like oh it's been like your or week. grogu was with luke for a whole two years got it i was like that's not i don't think so thank you so much for clearing that up yeah. i feel much no better kenny grogu was with uh luke in the book of boba fett um, yes ahsoka ahsoka was there too i don't um, like that Oh, they were because... hanging out. No. It was kind of like a reverse uh Grogu said deuces to Luke. That's all I know. Yeah, he was like he ch um. he chose Den because he's his dad. Because <laughs> he loves him. And he, he loves him. He chose him. He chose being a Mandalorian. Yeah, Luke off <laughs> Luke offered Grogu Yoda's lightsaber. Um they they even did like the whole uh Dagobah training thing where like Luke was running with Grogu on his back. This seems yeah. important. Yeah, Grogu was uh, levitating a whole crap load of frogs. I believe like, it. Luke was doing that, and Grogu was like, holy crap. Grogu it, was hungry, let's be honest. There are actually, you should just watch, there's like two episodes of Book of Boba Fett that are actually, like, or maybe it was just the one, but it was like, they're man, oh, because he's in the last episode and helps Boba Fett, but there's an yeah. entire episode that's just a Mandalorian episode yep. inside the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, like... I know. That's how good Book of Boba Fett was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mid show and then it had two good episodes. The, the confidence of a show to ditch its initial premise halfway through. You just, we're not talking about Book of Boba Fett. We're here to talk about the good things about Mandalorian. I was oh. just going to say, to, to be fair to the Book of Boba Fett and to the Mandalorian, the end of season two of the Mandalorian hands it off to the Book of Boba Fett as a continuation of the story oh, of the yeah, Mandalorian. No, oh, freaking, you're right. Gosh, dang it. Kenny, this so, sounds like you, a you problem. It is a me problem. You have plenty of time. You watch so much media. What have you done? Do I? Do yeah. I? Yeah. Do I? You, yeah. Yeah, it's true. I do. You could have sacrificed a Star Trek thing to be on our level. How dare you? <laughs> So, so far in this episode, we've covered the armor and, and the group of Mandalorians with their cult ceremony and the uh, the helmet that was basically the Boba Fett uh, toy, like helmet toy that you could get, um, I believe, back when Attack of the Clone. I think it, it was a toy that came out a while ago. I don't remember exactly when, but it was a toy. That's uh, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly because the, the tiny Mandalorian helmet. For the little baby faked in Jaren. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, it's just a bigger little T. But no, you're absolutely right. It looks exactly like the Boba Fett 
helmet toy. That's amazing. I can't um, I can't take credit for that. I've I've seen that online in the past few days. So, so I'm not gonna I thought they were showing time. Boba Fett getting crowned and because yeah, he did look he did look like a uh, kind of a slightly older age like i know it's not daniel logan because daniel logan's way beyond aged from that what? but <laughs> but like you could could see how spoilers that, how the actor could potentially have been like an aged up mm-hmm. like boba fett um daniel logan-esque type actor and then i thought they were gonna be like they it. never said don't take your helmet off so it doesn't count yeah but yeah uh, and then so and then Din came and then in. They show up. <laughs> he, yeah, he blasts the the crocodile into like spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> Mike's got some mom spaghetti on his hoodie. It's my sick hoodie because it's comfortable. How's that eight mile? How's that eighth? Terrible. Mile <laughs> yeah, right. I, I couldn't get past the first one eighth mile. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then so then then this was where the the redundant line came in again, where the armor. She's like, "Yes, we we talked about this in the book of Boba. Remember, we, we already had this discussion. Why did you come here to talk to me about the <laughs> same thing?" Again? That would have been great if she was just like, "I told you," and that was the end of it. We had we this combo. Told, yeah. We've talked we... about how you don't pay attention. <laughs> this is one of our things we're working on in couples. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> no hands. What's up, Kenny? <laughs> uh. Again, can I talk about the Starfighter? Yeah, Kenny loves ships, yeah. which of course. Yeah, and, oh, he also got that in Book of Boba Fett, by the way, too. Okay, that's exactly yes. what I was going to ask. <laughs> oh God, I forgot. <laughs> yes, uh, it's a cool ship, and it's got a little baby bubble. It's got a little baby bubble for uh, mm-hmm. Baby Yoda. Yeah. Yep. For now. Awesome. That's, that's where. Look, I I I, I like to have strong thoughts <laughs> examining themes and how this connects my personal politics and philosophies and whatnot but i like it whenever the baby is in the little spaceship uh, the bubble. it's cool he's got a little bubble well and what you don't what you're gonna love, love specifically kenny too is it is a naboo fighter and that's like where an astrotech droid would go so yep. it is specifically naboo which means that's why it's so sleek and beautiful so it is aesthetically very pleasing yeah i just, I like the lego for set for it because there's like little random yellow tiles that you can put on it where you where there's the parts of the yellow paint that are still kind of on the the now fully almost the silver oh uh and one naboo starfighter oh my god <laughs> i did not know there was a lego set for that <laughs> jizz walling all over the place oh boy <laughs> it's been a couple minutes since someone said it oh <laughs> boy I'll I'll send you a link after we're done, Kenny. Oh so boy, spend. Money. Um, I will it say, <laughs> this this scene is redundant. Redundant lines. I was confused afterward, but I will say it is an interesting way to visually represent part of their sort of cultural religious practices. Which, as of now, as of, to this point, we hadn't had a lot of, except just being spoken by their armor. So yeah. there is that. Yeah, that that was like. I think that's like the only way they were able to work that in without it actually being a din flashback mm-hmm. with it being like the fake out flashback and then why not make it a din flashback that was actually kind of bewildering to me yeah <laughs> why not give him more depth I care about him I care about why he gives such a shit about this like why this is like he was saved by these people because you know they took in orphans because that's how you grow a terrorist group I don't know <laughs> so <laughs> the Jedi took kids too so yeah. yeah. And the Jedi yeah. also suck. So <laughs> I've got lots yeah. of weird feelings. Don't worry Aspen, about it. Aspen, how do you feel about the Jedi? You I have a lot of complicated clear. feelings about Jedi. <laughs> so, but we don't need to get into it. We don't need to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so after all this uh uh Din Djarin then travels to Navarro where uh, Navarro basically keeps getting a like an up, like an uplift upgrade. Uh, each time we see it, where it looks like more and more bougie. Uh, each time, uh, I'm still is... waiting for Carl Weathers to be like, "You got a lot of meat left on that bone." <laughs> Anytime they see him, get, get every time in there, <laughs> get a little stew going. Every <laughs> single time I see him, I want to hear that so bad. I don't know why. And there, there's there's a lot of uh, creeds on screen 
this weekend too between Griff Karga in the Mandalorian this week and then you got Michael B. Jordan in theaters as his son in Creed 3 you got Apollo Creed's all over the place and I think there is a very slight homage to Predator in this too when uh, Din and Grief like do the handshake they do like what has become the meme with uh, like Arnold and <laughs> yeah they basically the arm do... wrestle meme yeah there's not like a way you can kind of handshake yourself I guess. yeah <laughs> well there is but that's yeah. called jizz whaling um anyways churning butter it, it all comes it all comes back around it's like poetry it rhymes <laughs> uh, you know what he did look great i just kept yeah, he, saying i was like those little androids uh, or rope little droids. Droids. Rogue droids <laughs> those little droids <laughs> rope droids they were doing a really bad job though because his cape he went downstairs they have one wheel what do you expect from him to to me that that considering where because carga comes from mm, what debatable sources yeah right uh it just kind of adds an air of uh oh this might be going south because he's wearing a big old cape and it'll be one thing to wear a big old cape that's fine people can pull off capes look at lando but not only that you've got and mando so lando and mando uh, as long as you have an ando in your name you're good yeah and or oh, yeah <clears throat> yeah well. cassian and or if he wants to wear a cape He'd be good. He's good. He's yeah. good. He's got the he's got the ando section in his name, so he's good to go. He does. Uh, those little droids just add a little. There's something a little sinister, even though we there. There's nothing there, but it just makes me tilt my head much like a curious dog and go, hmm? meow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wait, can you say? Wait, what do you mean? Sinister, as in like he feels more sinister. It makes just... him. It it makes him feel more sinister to me because there's all of this stuff that's going on literally above the frame and he's going mando what's going on i'm working hard to make the city uh be on the up and up here it is meanwhile there are these two literally smaller (laughs) not necessarily creatures uh, thing i noticed too was that he insisted on him calling him high high magistry uh karga yeah, which I thought was interesting because I don't know if, if everyone has seen Quantumania yet. Yeah, or, but it's yeah. not really a spoiler. <laughs> but there's a character that insists on being called a certain title in the movie, and then you're like, "Oh, okay, this dude's kind of a, definitely going to end up being a jerk." So, yeah. well, we already got that with him because he was he was already a jerk because he tried to in what season one or two tried to steal Grogu. He tried to like. Yeah, I guess I guess they've kind of like kind of tried to redeem him, but I feel like it's it's gonna slowly like like um, absolute it, power is gonna corrupt absolutely. There is but, that is and only Sith deals in absolutes. So. <laughs> but then there is that section later where he uh, tries to he he, he runs the uh, the pirates out, but yeah. I guess even within that conversation with that pirate. Um, it, he definitely used to deal with the pirates and sounds like there was a lot of shady dealings probably to get things to where they are so there could there's there sounds like there's a kernel there of like he's trying to be better but you could always return and and kick him in the bud kind of yeah thing. that might not necessarily be out of altruism but he is making sure that the pirates are getting sure. there it could just be out of motivated self-interest because he has to establish himself as big dog mm-hmm. and if anyone can show any resistance to him then it creates a problem of trust in karga yeah but yeah. i i like him a lot and i thought that his cape was nice you want to get you want to have a little stew with carl weathers <laughs> i just want to hang out i just think that i mean they did a guy. similar thing in book of boba fett with boba fett and uh tatooine he had a they had a he stew. wasn't establishing himself well he did stew he took many bantha takes and that's all in the hips it's all in the hips <laughs> chubs there was an alligator in this one all comes yeah. oh man thing. they missed an opportunity with having <laughs> it's like uh, poetry grief karga take out I mean, <laughs> or just have him get like super 
uh, weirded out. <laughs> he's like, oh, hell no. And he falls out a window and then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then at the end of the season, they can go somehow Kreef Garga returned. Yep. Don't worry, but... he'll be back at the end of the credits. Yeah, Trubbs, Trubbs, Trubbs was a force ghost at the end of Happy Gilmore. He was. <laughs> but one important thing we learn in this scene is Cara Dune and Moff Gideon are in the hallway with Minkus and Mr. Turner from Boy Meets yeah. World. Yeah, you go down that hallway, you don't you never come back. <laughs> They're just gone. And side note, uh Good. <laughs> Kenny Kenny and Aspen. Yeah. Mike and I uh, have a friend that we grew up with who has the same exact name as the character on Boy Meets World, uh, Jonathan Turner. <gasps> oh. He's not in the hallway, though. Is it the same person? <laughs> is your no, friend the, the guy from Boy Meets World? <laughs> Wouldn't that be no. fabulous? Just like keeping he, the secret he's, for he's you? Not, he's not. That'd, be, that'd be some strange high school if a 40-year-old guy was with us. <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I hope for our Drew Barrymore did it. Turner to meet Anthony Quinn though, and then I can just post the picture and be like, Jonathan Turner across the multiverse. <laughs> it's popular like now. It. <laughs> but yeah, maybe they'll the start thing. a jizz walling band together. It's like poetry, yeah. it rhymes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Kenny, what? <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing that's here too is that Karga also offers uh din the the newly vacated position of marshal um which is that supposed is that like a i don't remember if that was supposed to be like a reference to cobb vanth because uh oh, the elephant Kara but he was, was Kara oh, was oh yeah car yeah car yeah car whatever he was the marshal Kara, Kara. tatooine though yeah yeah oh yeah yeah, he had she Boba was. Fett's armor. Yes, yes, yes. She was the marshal. Sorry, there's something you should know about me. I cannot pronounce or remember any name. Uh, <laughs> <Don't Cardu. worry. laughs> uh Yeah, she was the marshal. It was their clever way of being like, mm, she's out of here. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. She she got recruited by uh, the the rebel from Kim's Convenience. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad because I don't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> I'm just like that guy. <laughs> he, he's cool though. Uh, yeah, and then they want to rebuild and revive IG Eleven, which seems like a bad idea, and it seems like it takes away from IG Eleven's uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice that he did to save his little, his little babysitting buddy, Grogu. Also, if there was any way, like literally, he just walked in and was like, "Hey, let's try to revive him." And then they did pretty handily. Like if there was a clear, easy way to revive him, it seems pretty weird that they were like, instead of bringing him back, let's just turn him into a statue. <laughs> yeah, considering yeah. that Mando basically goes, well, he's connected to power now. No one, no one tried. No one tried. They had one of those outlets to the switch controls. They didn't realize they plugged them into that. Oh, this is a European socket. Yeah. These are all American sockets. <laughs> Yeah. wrong wattage wrong watto yeah, yeah. john was... watts directing skeleton crew there you go <laughs> oh my god it's like poetry it rhymes yeah kenny this okay this you're doing this thing where yeah. <laughs> you know it's like when you're rhyming like doing like rhyming songs so like the same word is technically a rhyme of itself and that's you <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah words like in the books like in last jedi luke's books <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, like the those, sacred texts. The sacred texts. The sacred texts. Yeah. P page turners, they were not just like their friend Jonathan Turner. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um it's like and much like right. Jonathan <gasps> Jonathan Turner, failure is the, the greatest teacher. <laughs> just like your friend who was secretly Jonathan Turner from Boy Meets World. Which I failed to watch Book of Boba Fett to prepare for this episode. Can't we talked that. a lot about that, didn't we? Yeah. It's like poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> so can I pop back for a second? Sure. Um, before we got you're to Navarro. Yes, you're allowed. The Disney Plus logo. <laughs> you're watching Disney Channel. They got <laughs> Aspen. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
that's when they see the purgle, the space whales, as they're going to Navarro. Okay. Michael and Kenny, you need to understand. I saw them. I was like, that's interesting. I didn't know mm-hmm. the connection. I like a space whale. What's that? I've watched Rebels. And also, okay. I was okay. watching it right next to uh, Man. That's not the exciting part. But the guy, my my friend Robert, Robert Uten, shout out Goulet. to you, Robert. Uh, he, he, went, what, he went, watch this, watch this, watch this. You need to watch this. And then he went, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said anything. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, when? <laughs> during Rebels? Da- during, uh, no, during, da- during the scene whenever the space whale shows up. Why not? And so, and so I was able to properly contextualize, oh, I remember there were space whales and Rebels. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's right. You do remember you did watch Rebels. You just haven't really watched Clone Wars. Yes. But they are in Rebels, so. Um, yes. I cried. Not watch Clone Wars either. So. I cried. And I need you to understand. I know I cry. I do cry a lot. But then during this, I just like yelled and screamed and was like. <laughs> yeah, to uh, be fair, you saw a really good sidewalk the other day and you were just like, <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. It was beautiful. There's little flowers coming out of it that shows that life can continue even in the hardest times. <laughs> life uh, finds a way. Life finds a way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Laura Dern, who did the Holdo maneuver. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's, it's like uh, poetry it runs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they're the you guys are jizz walling together now <laughs> they are they turn are, away the i i don't know should i i you know but just yeah. for some Go context ahead. i imagine this is this is setting up a touch of the ahsoka show which will be about the search for ezra bridger with sabine who sabine wren who is also a mandalorian Ah, so. not Sabine Charles, the bus driver from our youth. No, who's also in Boy Meets World, <laughs> a show cut, right? Uh, yeah. So, and these whales, a huge bit, a huge piece of the end of Rebels, but also just beautiful, and they can they can go at at like warp speed, effectively hyper hyper speed, uh, themselves through space, and it's like the inspiration. It's what inspired people to invent that kind of travel. Uh, they are beautiful and perfect, and I love them completely the end and so it was actually well it's not the end it was very beautiful to see grogu seeing them it was just beautiful it was beautiful what do you want kenny i'm sorry is it because i could talk for forever please go on oh no uh one of the things that makes me so livid as aspen can attest to is whenever movies and tv shows very often go you recognize that thing as the emotional beat and instead i can agree with that a little bit yeah uh i.e. at the end of Mandalorian season two, whenever they bring in Luke Skywalker. And for me, for me, it did not strike as thematically resonant to the story of the Mandalorian. It's resonant to Star Wars as a whole, and it felt out of place, as opposed to the presence of the space whale here, which we're still kind of in pipe legging mode. And that scene was just so lovely in establishing the beauty and the grandeur of this galaxy yes. and that's yes whenever you can do whenever Both. you can pull Both. in stuff from other pieces and establish tone yes mood it's it's this lovely piece of world building that you don't need to have context of what the heck this is from and it's just a beautiful scene and mando's not looking out it's just this just for grogu it's just <laughs> it's just a lovely i'm that's genuinely beautiful. getting boy this does not happen but i'm getting chills just describing it <laughs> i've also got goosebumps it was beautiful i'll ruin that wasn't there space whales in thor yeah but they weren't a, no but no still... avatar way of water <laughs> they're space, they're they don't space, count as space whales but... they're space dolphins oh space dolphins they're okay. alone hunter. although cool. although all dolphins are from space because they said so long and thanks for all the fish <laughs> But we're not to yeah. that episode yet. We're only in episode 38, not episode 42. So <laughs> that was good. That was good. Okay. I got that reference this time. <laughs> anyway, thank you. I don't I don't I I won't take up all the time with my emotions. Trump, you're good. When when that happened too, I was I went I was like, hey, Patrick. Patrick's the name of my son. Uh, <laughs> Patrick. Patrick, look. Look. The whales from from, from Rebels. He, he's he's like, yeah, dad. <laughs> 
Yeah. Stop. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, yeah. Dad. I'm watch. I'm watch, I'm also watching the TV. <laughs> that's funny i i like yelled at my partner my husband and he honestly yelled back so (laughs) (laughs) we were like oh (laughs) so yeah and also our dog sylvie uh was also watching the tv she's she's recently gotten to where she'll just sit there and actually like she will watch the screen of whatever's she was watching better call Saul with us while we were watching it to be fair that's really good tv Yeah. yeah Very she better compelling. watch. She better watch Loki when it comes back. So I can say because her name's Sylvie. <laughs> so oh. she's got to watch the show that she's named after. Oh, how um, great was Loki? So Kid me guy. Yes. That so, so and you got to watch Quantum Mania because of course Jonathan Majors. And yes. Have you? Oh, am I not spoiling anything? He's in the no. Film, you're good. Whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Kitty's face. My rule on spoilers: Wait, Jonathan is Majors is then... in Ant Man on the Quantum. <laughs> it's like in the trailer. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Uh-oh. There's and a new Mark. Marvel movie? Oh, my God. <laughs> He's also in Creed 3. This is now a Jonathan Majors podcast. Shouldn't they have call it, called it Threed? <laughs> I mean, Scream 5 should have been called Scream, but the 5 was... Scream. I mean, the S was a 5. <laughs> so it would have, well, although then it would have said 5 Cream. <laughs> Just Wallers. Just yeah, Wallers. There's five of the model notes, so there you go, five cream. Um, also, like yes. Speaking of things, that I think there was five of them. Uh, Din brings his parts to a group of Anzellan mechanics who tell him they're Babu Fricks. Things. Let's call them Babu Fricks. They're Babu yes. Fricks. Yes. <laughs> they're Babu Fricks. <laughs> yes. Babu Anzellan Frick, uh, who tell them that they need a new memory core to fully repair uh, IG Eleven, uh, and that. That whole scene was funny with like Grogu like picking picking one of them up like it was like a like a like a pet, mm-hmm. and I also like the shot of Din sitting in there with yeah, like just... the, pers- the perspective where it looked like a an adult sitting in like a toddler's like dollhouse or something like that. Some uh, real our f- stuff. Oh yeah, our our friends at uh, the live action Star Wars podcast said that uh, Disney should add like the door. To like their like little like I don't know mechanic garage somewhere in Galaxy's Edge just on one of the things so that like you could bend yeah. down and like look into it to see it because they have over in Adventureland like they have the the leprechaun door on the tree over there so they could do something similar like that would be cool. Don't put it in mechanics land. Just put it somewhere random. <laughs> when you walk by, someone like pops out and goes, "What do you want?" Like the guy did in this. Love it. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> just walking by. You. Just walking want? by Alice in Wonderland and it's, little Babu, it's, little Babu Frick comes out. And you're like, like, what the hell? It's in the Dumbo ride. There yes. you go. You Inside. sit in the ride and it comes out of one of the the seats. Yeah, that's right. What do you want? You're, you're in the you're in the teacup. <laughs> <laughs> Although they might be the right size for uh, the <laughs> um, the Fantasyland uh, boats. They could feel like giants there because they'd be like. <gasps> Over the little miniature, they change it to small world to all Babu Fricks. Yeah, but it's, if it was a, all Babu Fricks, it would just be it's called a, it's a world. Huh? It's a Frick world. It's a small Frick. Oh my god! Just well, Frick this. <laughs> it's like poetry around. I. Yeah, everyone's churning like... butter somewhere. What's up, Aspen? Sorry, <laughs> this is just like one of the best things. That I just love it. This, <laughs> this is funny and also i love this scene so much i just no that was please. a good scene bad baby, <laughs> bad baby. the, the like, genius i like of... how every other word was like an actual word yeah <laughs> he said he can't do it i know <laughs> the genius of the hard cut where you don't see grogu and then you cut back and he's just suddenly there <laughs> hugging the babu frick he's the main babu frick the actual, the titular Babu Frick? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. He's yeah. uncredited if he is. Oh, that's <laughs> he did a favor. Yeah, yeah if, if it was the real Babu Frick, he contractually he'd have to be higher in the billing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Considering yeah, considering that he's from he'd one be a with or an and or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And he would have had a, he would have had a at the end of the like droids already. <laughs> that's the, that's the last episode. You ruined it. Yeah. 
Yeah, no. Like, in, instead, he did a George Clooney guest starring on ER, where he just came in and waved his face. What a good guy! Yeah, he's what like, a good he's guy. Like, this is why him. Superman works so long. Aspen, what do you think about Batman and Robin? Uh, the film Batman and Robin with the yeah. nipple with the nipples. Nipple yeah, suit. The nipples. <laughs> um, and the uh, wall all over it. And the and the credit card, the back card, uh, the and the. It was great. Yeah, same. I agree. Loved it. Loved it. I agree. Think about it. Think about it constantly. Think about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like. Sorry, it wasn't a serious question, but now I'm seriously considering how I feel yeah. about Batman and Robin, which is that I thought it was great camp. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's it. That's how I feel. Uh Joel Schumacher uh, gone too soon. Schumacher. Oh, Schumacher. Uh, I've just been thinking about Ms. the movie. Twenty three, oh. uh, a lot. Anyway, <laughs> and then after that scene, <laughs> yeah, uh, we get Pizza the Hut's cousin. Yeah. Well, the other thing with like this pirate crew, I couldn't tell why like they looked familiar to me, other than it looked just like if like say like Voldemort got bad acne. They weren't the pirates from Bad Batch, were they? No. 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 Also, they're not like um, Hondo's pirates either, but they're just, they just seem like pirates. Yeah. Um, they didn't look like Johnny Depp. You either. don't trust them. That's all you know. Yes. Yeah. I did, though, during this scene, out loud say, Ha, I love a Star War. <laughs> this was a good Star War. Good more of a battle than a war. Uh, a good star battle war. Yeah. Big war is <laughs> yeah, that, that ship was weird too. That uh, kind of reminded me of uh, a little bit of like the sanctuary. The uh, not which ship? Not the sanctuary the or seaweed guy's ship? Yeah, seaweed guy's ship. It kind of uh, it looked. I'm trying to think. It I saw someone say it was the same ship. They oh, no, it didn't look. It didn't look like in Rogue One. They were trying to push something, and that was like the ship they. Oh yeah, it did. Kind of look like that. To me, it looked the most in this my Star Wars reference. It looked like the Star Destroyer from Dark Empire, but much, 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 much smaller. I don't remember. Not the size that counts. It's the way you use the force. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Speaking of uh, laying pipe, (laughs) just walled right into that one, didn't you? Instead of making a sex joke, I am gonna say <laughs> this was one of those scenes. mature one here. <laughs> this is one of those scenes that, like, even though I had a lot of fun, it did feel like a touch like. And now okay. that you've left this place to go get the piece that you need, you'll now face the pirates in your video game kind of vibe, <laughs> you know. And now you have to get through this battle to now get to the other side of it, um, which is fine. Uh, Kenny and I have been watching a lot of uh, Star Wars droids, and this, you know what that is? This episode felt like the live action like version of a droids episode. Aspen, I literally wrote that down. <laughs> I said these pirates are giving me big droids vibes. Yes, yes. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is a bit of a like frenetic movement without purpose kind of thing, or without interesting purpose. But yeah. it's okay. It's okay. I know it's it's pipe laying. Right. Which, well, it was, wanna, segments uh, of pipe. I wouldn't be surprised if like Favreau and Filoni did work in stuff to the show from like Star Wars droids or Star Wars Ewoks, like the animated series, considering the fact that like Din's original gun is Boba Fett's gun from the holiday special. Oh, you're right. <laughs> they not just them, but also even even we, Lucas. We've we've gotten <laughs> into this. Um, Ryan Johnson. <laughs> yeah, there are too many coincidences that we have found in droids on certain aspects of the show where once or twice you might be like "Mm, interesting but we've found so many wild correlations that it it, mm. oh yeah i don't like to be prone to conspiracy theory thinking however uh consider me a tinfoil hat wearing uh it's all connected droids truther yeah and a hundred percent. Like, Favreau and Filoni 
love Star Wars. Like they love it. And they have that they've um, they've clearly seen everything and I know they have. And I think it's really great when you can like what you were saying earlier, Kenny, just like you pull in something that feels thematically relevant, re- relevant and like feels like it has a place there, not that it's just there for the sake of it. And I feel like they do do that a lot and I appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I like I like Star Wars. I like Star Wars too. <laughs> Me too. We Wait, this is about Star Wars? We shall start podcasts. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, we should yes. go back to talking about MacGyver, Mike. I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, anyways, in this week's episode of MacGyver, God damn. I wonder what I was missing. Wait, I thought we were watching MacGruber. MacGruber. Crap, I, watched the wrong, I watched the wrong thing. <laughs> Not again. <sighs> Bad planning. So, on a scale of one to five mullets, how did we feel about this episode? I need Four. to know the definition of a mullet, good or bad. Good. I mean, good. Is so the zero rating would be business in the front, and the five rating would be party in the back. That that makes no sense. And That's then right. The, the three would just be like you know, like a buzz cut, like a yeah. normal. <laughs> Can you give me the business cut, uh, business in the front, and also in the back? Yeah. I'll rate it the hats from the Devo music video. There we go. <laughs> there, I don't know. I I rate it a Jedi braid. A Jedi oh. rat tail. The Jedi rat tail. The Jedi rat tail. <laughs> Jedi uh, side rat tail. Yes. We haven't even talked about the fact that the pirate, the pirate captain of the cool ship, goes avast. Avast. Mandalorian. <laughs> avast. I mean, he's a pirate. Oh, yeah, boy. reminding Makes us. Sense. Reminding and us once again. He's like fully committing to the pirate thing so much that he's become a seaweed. Yeah. Uh, but nobody told him he was a space pirate. Davy not a Jones. Sea pirate. <laughs> yeah, it's a real Davy Jones vibes for sure. Oh my Do we gosh. know what the pirate's name was? Uh, friend... Shard. Shard. Gorian Shard. Because I wrote Gorian Shard looks great. <laughs> it's such it's such a good design. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's moldy pizza the hut. <laughs> fantastic oh my gosh yeah that was a fun time you really blasted those weirdo pirates out of the sky yeah yeah they locked their targets on him but he got away quite easy stay on target (laughs) stay on target loosen up (laughs) yeah so that was fun um i will say though like you were saying, Michael, at the very end, the Bo-Katan thing, because he then goes to that planet. Oh, Mark left. <laughs> <gasps> Mark left. He was like, oh, boy. <laughs> well, we can keep going. He'll join eventually. Sure. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Well, I so. His Zoom crashed. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. Should we pause? We can pause. We can keep going. He's getting back in. OK. Um. OK, so. I'm curious what you loved about this scene, Michael, because like I can tell you what I loved about the Bo-Katan scene. And part of it is for my own thing, which is what I was <laughs> saying at the top, which is like, well, one, loved the way she was sitting in that chair. Mm. Two. <laughs> uh, two. Chair, I, I, I literally was like sitting there like, just tell him again that he's dumb. And like, it doesn't <laughs> matter that he took yep. off his stupid helmet that like, it's a cult. This is ridiculous. And she straight yeah. up was like, you're a fool. And I was like, yeah, she said it. Yeah, it was just that there was so much subtext told without having to, like, one, like, on the nose. It was, they could have a regular conversation, but you know her feelings just by how she's sitting. It was great thematically that way. And it adds a layer to her where it's like, she's not done. We're going to see her again somewhere. Good. We should. That dark saber is uh, in her mind. She wants yeah. it, <laughs> and she has to win it, which is the thing. And mm. the whole the whole backstory of it, of course, is that um, the backstory, as you know, Kenny from Rebels, yeah, is that like mm-hmm. Sabine got the dark saber off of Dathomir. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a whole thing with Maul and the and the witches, the witches. And Sabine gave the the dark saber to Bo-Katan, and that's the whole thing is that it was given to her. And so when uh, Mandalore, when they kind of pushed against the Empire, and Mandalore was just completely wiped out by the Empire, the whole thing became, 
oh, well, it's because you had to win it for it to actually belong to you. And that's where this is coming from in terms of the lore. So when she she had it once before, it didn't work out. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> even though she probably should be the one with it, but you can tell yeah. that she's like resentful and she's angry. Yeah. And it's like, I can see that starting to get like bubbling up and it is. Mm, yeah, beautiful. it was very good. And I feel like she should have it as well. Commando doesn't really want it. He just kind of happened to get it. Right. Right. Because he beat Moff Gideon and he was like, here, take it. And she wouldn't take it. So there's something yeah. brewing, whether Favreau wants to admit it or not. Yeah. I mean, she wouldn't take it because it had already been given to her. So she's mm. like, you could see her probably being like, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to like win it off of you. Uh, so, yeah, I, I know Paige Pascal didn't play this character in Game of Thrones, but he's kind of being like Jon Snow. He's like, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I'm going to pretend like I heard everything that you guys said when I became one with the Force there for a little while. Oh, um, you were a ghost. It was, nice. I don't, what's it I don't like know on the uh, What's it like to be a Force ghost? I was I was hanging out with Qui Gon, Obi Wan, mm. and Anakin, the Hayden version, Hayden Christian version of Anakin, <laughs> not the random white dude version. No. Side note to that, uh, I asked Chat GPT to write a really good script for Rise of Skywalker, and it had uh, Kylo Ren speaking with a force ghost of Darth Vader. And then later in another scene, he was then talking to the force ghost of Anakin Skywalker. But I was like, wait, so <laughs> was, was the, the force ghost like flipping back and forth between. We need a star Wars ghost hunters now just to find out these answers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and how do you pronounce uh, Bo-Katan's last name? So I want to know if this pun that I'm going to make is appropriate. You just said it. No, that's her first. That's like her first. Her her last oh, name is. I thought it, I don't know. Like, I don't know like, the names. So. It's like Obi Wan is, is his first name. Yeah, Obi Wan Bokata. I actually, I'm trying. To, it's I actually again because I don't remember, but I know it's it's yeah, it's K R Y Z E. Like, I don't remember how it's pronounced. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> I do not remember this. Beaches be crazy. Is that the was that the pun? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I said beaches. I said According beaches. to Google, it's Christ. 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 Okay. Oh okay. boy. Well, well, that oh, def boy. definitely doesn't work. I was talking about you know the scarif. You know beaches. Beaches there are crazy. Beaches, beaches be crazy. Beaches be yeah. crazy and blown up. Yeah, and or knows. I mean, he did know. He will know. <laughs> he will know. We're oh. buddy. Yes. Yeah. I freaking love Katie Sackhoff. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased that she is such a big part of Star Wars now. Yeah, I'm glad that she was a whole a hold over um, from playing or voicing the character in Rebels. Uh, yeah. And, and the Clone War. and Clone Wars, Clone Wars. yeah, uh, and then and then they like basically did her hair <laughs> to make her look like the character even more. Now, I I like uh, Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka, and like I'm not really sure how like, and I really like Ashley Eckstein as Ahsoka, but, but I'm not sure how well Ashley Eckstein would have uh, translated from animation to live action as Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess it only works, I guess, sometimes because <laughs> there's the rumor to the, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Mads Mikkelsen's brother, um, yeah, who did he... the voice of Thrawn on the show is going to be playing the live action. Is that a rumor? Thrawn. In my mind, I thought he was like confirmed as, oh man, I got to stop just believing the internet. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that's not a good, good thing to do is not to believe everything on the internet. Oh god, guys! But oh, I want, I want to god. believe that one. <laughs> I want to believe it's so good. It's so he's perfect. He's physically just paint him blue. He got it. We did it. There you go. Done and done. Maybe he's yeah. I'm still, I still wish that Raul Coley could have been Ezra. Uh, oh yeah, that would have been awesome. A little hopefully, too old, but I love that hopefully, guy. eventually they they just write him into a role for Star Wars in general, just because he's such a big fan of Star Wars. Uh, and I hopefully they eventually make uh, uh, Galen Merrick, uh, aka Star Killer, 
AK uh, Sam Witwer uh, canon again somehow. I know they can't do the same thing that they already did with the Force Unleashed game where his family crest was the Rebel Alliance, what became what became the Rebel Alliance logo. Because I still think that would have been cool if that actually was still canon and like that because was like that, a way of like showing like I don't know, just I haven't I haven't played any Star Wars games, but is the the new canon being that it's based on Sabine's uh graffiti, right? I think so now. Yeah, yeah, it's I, the Phoenix kind of rising. Yeah, I just think it was cooler when it was like kind of as him being like essentially like what spurred the Rebel Alliance to, you know, take flight after like trying to take off Vader. Sure. Kenny, yeah. I looks truly lost. There are Star Wars video games? Oh yeah. What? Oh yeah. I played not... uh Jedi Academy. I played all of that. And then I played an hour of Kotor and I was like, this is boring. <laughs> Which is probably a heretical statement considering I know how well regarded that game was. But I was just like, I'm just keep walking. What what am I supposed to do here? One of the droids uh, the Lord from... of the Rings of Star Wars games. <laughs> yeah. Here's the first movie. Here's the second movie. Wow. Wow. Here's the third one. There's only one return, and it's not of the king, it's of the Jedi. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> wow. I have not heard of that reference in a long time. Long time. Well, we just did it last week in episode 37. You see uh -oh. why we did it in episode 37? In a row? Yeah. Uh, yep. Certainly. Oh, my gosh. That's why your last episode was about Kevin Smith. Yeah. That's why we're talking about jizzwalling. <laughs> And churn and butter. You know we, how we, you know we how much money the average the Kevin Smith makes? trenches last time. How much we, does the average have to like Waller scoop make? ourselves out? I'm sure it's a sticky amount, whatever it is. I'll leave a boy. <laughs> Aspa, what are your feelings on Kevin Smith? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for asking me. Uh <laughs> one time I listened to Kevin Smith go on a wild, wild rant about the spider from Wild Wild West. And I'm going to say that really endeared me to him. So that's how I feel about him. Nice. I also like that they've uh, written that into the, the animated uh, Superman Doomsday cartoon. Uh, there's a giant mechanical spider in that animated movie. And there's a character that Kevin Smith voices in that movie. And he's like, holy crap, he did it. Kenny, because you know, because you love Superman. It's all like this mechanical spider was supposed to be in Superman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you know the whole thing. I yeah, love yeah. Superman. Also, as a, I was a diehard Kevin Smith fan oh. uh, to the point where I saw Live Free or Die Hard in the theaters. Uh, so did yeah, I. I, I <laughs> you probably saw Catch and Release in the theaters too, right? So did I. I did not, but I definitely <laughs> rented it at Blockbuster. Uh, and I probably Blockbuster rented it to you. Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I knew I rec recognized you. <laughs> um, yeah, I was such a Kevin Smith fan back in the day. Um, have definitely fallen off mm. since then. Thanks for volunteering that information. That's the second time you've asked me how I thought about something, and I did not ask you back. But <laughs> well, you did. To be fair, well, you really only said you you heard one anecdote mm -hmm. from him. I've and seen you, clerks. Sure. <laughs> yeah it's good <laughs> it is but did you see cop out nah i definitely rented cop out on blu-ray from blockbuster and Wait, blockbuster had blu-rays it did yeah. Yeah, we thought they were dead before that and that yeah. also that blu-ray was really good because kevin smith was doing the maximum movie mode on cop out and so he was popping out every once in a while to get behind the scenes details. And one of the things that was so great about Kevin Smith is just going ham on all those DVD. Very good Kevin Smith hand wave impression. <laughs> What's up, man? Kevin Smith here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Kevin Smith's also, great. Yes, but we're not doing episode 37. We're doing episode 38. 38. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is the mall rats essentially to 
that previous episode. This is the cold lasagna episode. This this is the Womp Rats. What are those spa things you hate that are in the trees of this episode, Mark? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> the freaking Kowaki and monkey lizards can go to hell. <laughs> oh, yeah. The salacious crumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Much like Babu Frick, I only know them by their the one of their names, the Salacious yeah. Crumbs. <laughs> yeah, I wish they were all still uh, turning on a a, sp- uh, a spike, not a spike, spit, spit, spit. spit. A spit. Yeah, I'd I'd spit one out if I was eating it. Uh, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, Stu- <laughs> stupid quacking monkey lizards. <laughs> uh, the only well, thing I was annoyed more uh, by laughing uh, like the quacking monkey lizards. Uh, when I was a kid, it was the damn dog in D- Duck Hunt. It was, it was the the quacking monkey lizard and the dog in Duck Hunt. You were that bad po- at Duck Hunt? Yeah, the dog is supposed to help. It gets the ducks when you shoot them. <laughs> the dog's a jerk. He laughs at you. That's true. If you're mad at it. He could, he could be helping out instead of laughing at you. You can fight the dog in Smash Brothers now if you want. Good. I'm going to punch him. <laughs> That's the oh only God. dog. That's the only dog I've ever wanted to punch in the face. It was the eight bit oh. dog from Duck Hunt. I know there's also a mod to Duck Hunt where it's called Dog Hunt, and you shoot the dog. And you've played this? No, I just know that it exists. And you're the duck. Like it shows you as the duck holding. <laughs> oh no! So it just inverts the point of view so that you're the duck flying around. So anyway, Kenny, do you want to know anything more about Mandalore? Yeah. <laughs> or Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> As we wrap with our closing thoughts, what an episode. What were some of your favorite moments from the apostate? <laughs> they threw Grogu. True. We didn't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, you just threw us. Out. Uh, when <laughs> look, this is this is obviously an extraordinarily high budgeted show that is literally creating new technology that is revolutionizing the way that Hollywood is making films and television shows. And also there is no way that they could throw baby Yoda where it doesn't look like you are literally throwing a doll across the room. And I love it. It was humorous. Yeah. Oh, little buddy. Is there like a scene he... that reminded me of Breaking Bad? Oh, with the pizza? No, where the guy's legless no. in the bed and sees Walter and tries to crawl and kill him. Oh. that's oh. I was thinking that the whole time. And then he's like, Grief! And he chucks Grogu across the room, just like a volleyball. Yeah. And for I don't some remember reason, him throwing Grogu in Breaking Bad. You didn't watch the right Breaking Bad. Oh, no. It was in the spinoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kenny, when you downloaded it from LimeWire, you got the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was called um, Better Call Mall. <laughs> Kenny, Mall takes over Mandalore. On point. Bad. Bad. I don't yeah, like bad. it. I like it. He has Stop spider bad. legs. It's fantastic. It's perfect and wonderful in every single way. He actually has, like, cool legs because of this. This lady, <laughs> she gives him some cool eggs. Are you telling me that somehow Maul returned? <laughs> but in the best way possible. God, it's so yeah. good. The only person who's ever died from a lightsaber to the gut is Qui-Gon Jinn. Poor buddy. Only one. You can you can get bisected in the Star Wars universe and still come back. Yeah. So that, so that Stormtrooper from Obi-Wan Kenobi, I mean, they could be good to go. Oh, that, yeah. that fence? That ruled. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite part was the Snoke? space whales. Oh yeah, Snoke. Somehow he could come back. Snoke returned. I, oh, I mean, because he's. Oh, I don't we get. saw Kino Loy in Andor, so Snoke Kino returned. Loy is not Snoke. Who's Kino Loy? Doesn't... Who's Kino Loy? Andy Circus. Oh Kino, my Kino gosh. Loy <laughs> is Smeagol. Oh boy, he is Kino Smeagol. Loy. Kino you Loy becomes Smeagol. Five. Oh yeah. my god! It's actually Andor is actually a prequel to the Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, not a prequel to Rise of the Planet of the Apes. No, it's it's, the Planet of the Apes movies. That's a prequel to King Kong. Aspen, which is a prequel to um, Thirteen Going on Thirty, which is also with Andy Serkis. (laughs) Oh my God! Uh, Whichever uh, 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 Black Panther is trying to. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the Batman. The Batman. Yes. The Batman. The Batman. Sorry, Aspen, what were you saying? Aspen, okay. you need to watch all of the Planet of the Apes movies, except for maybe the Tim Burton one. Okay. Well, no, you don't understand. You, no. They're really good. What? Watch, watch the Tim Burton one, and then read the Kevin Smith comic in which the same ending happens. Wow. That came out before. Well, those two the Tim hate Burton each other, movie. so. It's true. Wow. The Batman. The Batman. Jane, Sil- Jane, Son, and Bob come up against Ape. Raham Lincoln. Oh, wait, oh, wait, those that super smart as me were left alone to bitterly cry. You maniacs! Damn, damn you! Damn, damn you, saw the hell! Oh, wow. My favorite part was the space whale. <laughs> Getting back on track. <laughs> Once My again. favorite part was also the space whales. Uh, IG-11 does become sentient for a very brief spell and then well speaking of throwing grogu they throw grogu and then ig11 real terminator vibes there mm-hmm. yeah uh okay. especially considering it seems like ig11 is almost in the exact same configuration as terminator is in the first terminator movie crawling across the floor with one hand and, and then just grabbing the on so good <laughs> So Aspen, good. what do you think of the Terminator movies? Love them. I've only seen Terminator and T2. That makes sense. So you see oh, the I Terminator see movies. I love them. I love them. I think they're perfect. I think yeah. You're perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vast comparison to calling them a Cena. <laughs> Seven billion people on the planet. There's got to be one person out there who's like, look. Finally, Messina. Messina went solo, got rid of the dead weight that was Loggins. There's one Messina fan. Yeah. It's his mom. Person going to a Kenny Loggins concert and just screaming, we want Messina, and trying to get the chant to go on. Gets but beat up. everyone else is just like, I want to hear him play I'm All Right. Can you please keep it down? But the guy doesn't want to let it go and just keeps going, we want Messina. We want Messina. It's a great joke. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Derailed. <laughs> Mike, what was your favorite part of the episode? The ending. That was the Bo Katan part. Because I don't, I didn't know about the Space Whale's prior existence. So that's on me. You're the more be, you know. You're going to be so happy. You're going to be so excited. It's a joy. <laughs> Kenny, what was your favorite part? It's going to be a toss up between the croc roll, which delighted me to no end. Mando coming in in his starfighter that was outstanding. Um, and then I'm a sucker for a great asteroid chase. Good night. Yes, that, that was that was the best asteroid chase since Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, this, I thought they were going to do that move at one point where he's just like chilling out on the back of one of the. He kind he kind of was he kind of yeah. did the, that the, explosion the, just happened. The yeah. sound design of it was so good. It was like there's also that really great asteroid chase in um, Attack, Attack of the of Clones. The Clones. Like also, poetry rhymes. Yes. Mm. but it's like that same sort of like he was he was attacking them almost the way that like Django did, but maybe without the boom. But it still had that same sort of sound oh, feel yeah. to it. Like that sound like scape was very similar, and I was feeling it. Yes, I, I would agree with all of that. So, but that's not an opinion. What's your favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite part? Yeah, what was your favorite part? Yeah, Mark. Mark, what was your favorite part? Yeah, oh, Mark. Was my favorite part. Oh, I said my favorite part was the the whales. Oh, too. the whales. We agree. Oh, I missed that part. I thought you were trying to cop whales. out. <laughs> I saw the whales. I was just like, cool. They're space whales. And then I thought of Thor. <sighs> well, you were thinking of Thor because of IG Eleven. That's true. It is Taika. Like a... It's like poetry, it rhymes. Oh my god. And, you know, uh No, I was thinking that... of Thor because the architect didn't hit anyone with their goddamn hammers and all and these Padme. damn series, everyone has a hammer and nobody's using it. It's getting frustrating. Someone needs you know to get what... hit with a hammer. You know who else who had a hammer? Thor. Padme Padme. <laughs> and Thor loved it. She hit someone with it? Oh. Oh my gosh. That's right. Natalie Portman was in that movie. <laughs> a movie that I liked. Yeah. Oh, that's right. 
It was fine. Ashley, <laughs> can you calm down? It was fine. <laughs> she loved she loves it so much that she's overwhelmed with emotion. Ragnarok she, is like my favorite. Ragnarok movie. is amazing. Ragnarok's. And love and thunder was fine. <laughs> Aspen, I do like listening to your podcast, the Sleepy Time Marvel podcast, where you talk <laughs> about Marvel news in very ASMR tones. Uh, this week, we're, we're watching Quantumania, where we think Jonathan Majors is amazing. <laughs> the Jazz Radio podcast. <laughs> the, the Jizz Radio podcast. Yeah, yo. <laughs> Messina would be there, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I just keep thinking John Cena when you keep saying Messina. They can't see him, so Loggins on John Cena. <laughs> it probably happened. You just mm-hmm. don't know about it. Yeah. This would be John Cena's uh, uh, Zoom video, by the way. No, what you did earlier was John Cena's Zoom video. No, I was becoming one with the Force. It was <laughs> it was like you in that episode a few episodes ago. I don't know. Yeah, I was there the whole time, though. I don't understand what happened with that. Like the rec- it just didn't record me for some reason. Oh technology. no! Technology. Funny. Oh, I technology. love technology, but not as much as technology. We need Babu uh, Frick. Babu okay. Frick. Hey, hey. <laughs> He's my best friend. <laughs> He's my only friend. <laughs> my oldest friend, has it. He's my oldest friend. Oh. General Kenobi. That so that's uh that's gonna do it for our recap of the Mandalorian Mark season ending. three, episode one, chapter oh seventeen, the apostate. Uh we hope you enjoyed our discussion. Uh if all you get all the references, it. you win a prize. And that, that prize is the no prize. Um, that prize is the Messina autograph CD. That prize is the dark saber, uh, which you're given to it, but mm-hmm. when you do that, then you kind of, you know. You didn't win it the correct way, so you're not going to actually get anything out of it. You're not going to learn a lesson. I'd rather give them the churn butter. And lead your people. <laughs> this is going to slice butter. If you just had like a little like dark saber and <laughs> like butter knife. Speaking just... of freaking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that <laughs> tiny bit in Internet that movie. Oh my gosh, where that activates the tiny lightsaber and makes instant toast whenever they're cut <laughs> through the bread. Freaking great One day. bit. There's probably a Star Wars actor in that movie. I just can't remember. <laughs> I'll just think probably. of Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> I don't know. There probably is, but I, yeah, I don't know. No. Uh, no. Yeah, so you got, you can leave us a review. Warwick Davis was in it. There you go. Yep. Yes. Yes. There, yes. It. See, there he was. He was, he was Marvin, the, the depressed robot. Is name Marvin? Yeah, Marvin. Yep. Marvin the paranoid android. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, see, I, I knew <laughs> it was in there. New Warwick was in there. Uh, yeah. But uh, you can leave us a review on the podcast catcher of your choice if it allows you to do so. It helps us out a lot. You can find the show on social media uh, at Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube by looking for Holdopod. And you can find me and Mike on Instagram and Twitter uh, under our names. <laughs> All the stuff's in the show notes. Yes. Our <laughs> uh, our editor, uh, Vactor, is just his name as well. And then where can they find you guys? Oh, Kenny, you do it so well. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to find us on social media, please go to Twitter or Instagram at Trek Wars Pod. Additionally, if you would like to hear more of our dulcet tones into your ear holes, please go <laughs> visit us at trekwarspod.com or subscribe to the Trek Wars podcast on the podcatcher of your choice. Uh, to folks that might not know what the Trek Wars podcast is, I believe it is the only podcast on the internet that is going through both franchises, Star Trek and Star Wars, in chronological <laughs> release order and comparing every single episode. I don't versus- know another one. So. Yeah, versus one another, so we can finally answer the one question, the ultimate question in fandom: which is better, Star Trek or Star Wars? The answer is Star Wars. Is the answer is Star Trek, Aspen? <laughs> uh, so you can visit that over at Trek Wars Pod or the podcatcher of your choice, or just shoot us an email: trekwarspod at gmail dot com. 
You could also, we also have our own individual Twitter. Oh, that too. You can follow me on Twitter at the Kenny Madison. I'm at Aspen like a tree, but I don't do a lot of fun stuff, but you can follow me if you like. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So since you talk about Star Trek and Star Wars, which one did J.J. Abrams hurt more? Star Star Wars. Wars. (laughs) Agreed. Look at that. (laughs) Yes. We We have a lot of feelings. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, the 2009 Star Trek movie is a great movie. Yeah. It is It is one of the examples that I can rarely point to where a movie succeeds despite an absolutely abysmal script. And I think that is genuinely <laughs> to, due to the talent nice. of Abrams, who is able Didn't to... Did he write it? He... Uh, Damon Lindelof wrote one of them. So they're they're credited writers. Uh, the credited writers are or- Orsi and Kurtzman. However, I worked with a PA from the 2009 Star Trek movie who said that Abram is, this was during the writer's strike as well. So Abrams would come in and do uncredited rewrites every single morning to mm-hmm. just get things kind of up on its feet. So yes-ish. Uh, Into Darkness is a hot mess and exhibits the worst of Abrams's tendencies. But whenever he's not playing with a mystery box, which is his biggest box. weakness, I think he's doing, I think he is capable of really great character work. Meanwhile, it's so wild. They never made a third sequel film to Star Wars. Star Trek. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> That that's that's your answer. We we uh we think Force Awakens is uh I think it's very fun. I I think it's I like it more than Kenny does. We... I th- I think that I do not like it so much because the first thirty minutes of that movie is so absolutely fabulous. Yeah, and true. then I can feel the movie go wrong as soon as they reintroduce <laughs> the Millennium Falcon and going, oh no, oh it's, no. I I like it a little more, but I'm there. Whereas Rise of Skywalker we both hate with the kind of passion that you know destroys planets <laughs> it, it it feels it feels so cynical yeah so that's it that's our, your long answer no worries and if it's people an are, yeah people might also be like oh now we hate them and i'm sorry for that <laughs> at some point i'll watch rise of skywalker again and maybe with 10 20 years distance uh maybe i can find the joy in it because babu frick the real babu joy frick. oh boy I freaking love babu frick you kidding me guy <laughs> yeah he's fast <laughs> yeah he genuinely is <laughs> they had space horses though also, that I forget. Was, abrams that had a bad deal Jedi. by <laughs> having to make a movie with that much he needed to serve the story but really he needed to serve lucasfilm because lucasfilm's behind the scenes troubles were so uh, notoriously difficult and so they needed some sort of meta story where abrams was willing to come back and prove that lucasfilm is a place where you can come and actually work and things are are safe and it's a complicated (laughs) thing it's not making movies is hard you kidding me did you know (laughs) i've heard I didn't know. I don't make them. I just tell all my opinions on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, so that seems like a good time to say, <laughs> as always, we are grateful to George Lucas for creating the Star Wars universe. Oh, dear. Thank the maker. <laughs> <laughs>